My name is Skay, and I'm one of the co-founders here at Gusto. And today, I'm joined by Shelly DaCosta, an HR expert in the rewards and recognition space. And so, is it okay if employees don't have much of an appetite for socializing with each other? Like, is it possible to have a good culture without it? I think I think the organization has to look at itself and say, like, what define good culture? What is that for the organization? What is good culture? Do you want a culture of people being really, really close friends and socializing together and inviting each other to major milestones in their personal lives and stuff. You want a culture that is giving back to the community um, because that's part of your core values is in a culture of teamwork, a culture where you're proud of your products or best in class service. Um, and then you figure out what's necessary to create that. So, you know, if, if it's uh, a culture of giving back to the community, then you can have social activities that evolve around that, the shoreline cleanup days, right? Where the company is, you know, and everybody gets their t-shirt and they have a half day and you're providing lunch and you do it in teams, you know, you're, this team is on for this day and the next team is on for the next day. So all the work still gets done, but everybody has an opportunity to attend, make it as easy as possible. And for those that absolutely do not want to attend, is there something else that they can do so they feel like they're still contributing? But that can be a great social activity, and it's still pushing across your culture and pushing across your values. Yeah, and I and I think here, kind of, it, it's almost kind of counterproductive, right? Like if if you're trying to make a good culture or build a good culture, um, and you have people that might be anxious in social situations and might prefer to kind of avoid it, forcing them to do that is is not going to be a good culture for them. So, you know, I when I think about culture, um, I I kind of think about the 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 POW model, right? So purpose, opportunity, well being. And so like on the well being front there, if you are forcing people kind of into situations that they absolutely don't want to be in, like it is not a good culture for that that person. It's not a good kind of working experience for that person. Absolutely. And that, you know, goes right back to even in recognition, you're right. If somebody does not want to be centered out and have applause, you know, in the next meeting and or whatever, some big spotlight shone on them, that leader should know that when they're giving recognition, that leader should know that when they're setting up social activities, right? right? It's good to know who your, your, your quiet people are, who's comfortable with that and what people want to do and how they want to engage with each other. Some people are very, very happy to come to work, support the values of the culture of the organization, but they don't have time or they don't want to socialize outside of work hours. And so in in those instances, where do you focus kind of your culture building effort, efforts if you're not doing social activities? So I think I think then you you figure out what are the activities that can still push along your culture without it necessarily being social, right? So I can still support giving back to the community by doing a a one-on-one volunteer work on my own, that I don't have to join Shoreline clean up with a whole pile of employees for the day and be near the the lakefront or something. Do do you know what I mean? There's another opportunity that I can do. So provide different opportunities for people to contribute to the culture and be ambassadors of the culture, if you will, and, and carry on the culture in the organization or show that they support it in other ways that aren't necessarily as social as other people would like to be. And so you want everybody to um, conduct smart skills so that you know, or, 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 or you know, everybody, um, y- you want them all to understand that about the team members and everything. So you do that during work hours and that's considered, right, a training program that you conduct and it's a requirement to be there. It's not a requirement to necessarily come to the dinner later on that evening for the group to celebrate. So I did my training, I participated, I found out that, you know, um, Skay's, you know, uh, whatever it is uh, on my team and that so-and-so doesn't like to do this and -and so-and-so likes to do that and here's who I should go to to solve this problem for me, et cetera. I learned all of that because that's part of our culture and important for the organization, but I didn't need to go and toast and and have dinner afterwards. Yeah, because there might be individuals that still flourish and, and thrive in kind of collaborating with colleagues about work topics, right? Um, but then don't feel comfortable kind of uh, socializing and having conversations around things out, outside of work, right? And so 
I think in those instances, you can you can still encourage kind of a uh, a culture of collaboration and and create opportunities for those employees to participate in some way uh, in. I don't know. I, like, have you have you done kind of uh, like a twist up on on some work projects that allow people to kind of collaborate in different ways? Absolutely. You know, um, set up different projects, uh, partner up people that normally haven't been partnered up together before. Um, set up cross functional teams. You know, those kinds of things to work on different projects, solution pro- problems. Put that problem of culture bears and social activities out to those employees, like. Can you guys help us solve this? We we need to increase the amount of people that have knowledge about our key objectives in the organization. But we hear that a lot of people don't want to go out to dinner and do this about it or do that about it. Or we hear that people aren't comfortable in that form. So how can we make it more comfortable for people? Uh, you know, and people, you know, it may come forward that some people aren't comfortable eating in front of other people. Some people aren't comfortable outside of work hours because they've got family obligations and things that they can't uh, otherwise do. So, okay, you know, or or some people are like, no, the, the dinner thing just it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work with my commute. It doesn't work for that. But I'd love to meet up for breakfast once in a while. Like we had a whole team that that was the best way that once a month, five of us had breakfast together uh, and, you know, sorted out some problems, issues with our team. We'd, we'd even do development talks. Like someone's on my team is ready for another project. How can I, what can I do? And then somebody would say, I've got a project on my team I could give them. And you know, you, you just kind of do that. And so it was great. We had a little social activity amongst us leaders. Um, we shared a meal um, uh, that the company picked up the cost for. Uh, and at the same time, we were solving problems within the organization and you know, building on the culture. So I think you just have to be very creative and, and remember that listening strategy, right? Find out what your employees want and ensure it aligns with the culture. Um, and any like external supports that you bring in and stuff, they understand the industry, the culture, and your people because there's so many great ideas. If you want to build a culture that drives performance, check out Culture is the Ultimate Advantage, our free guide to creating a culture where your people feel seen, heard, and valued. Click the link in the description to get your copy. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the full episode on our channel. You can also listen to episodes on the go wherever you get your podcasts. Please like this video and subscribe to see all future uploads. And don't forget to recognize somebody for a job well done today. Mucho gusto!